To you, Lord, I'm grateful, Allah the Sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the Forgiver. For blessings, I'm hopeful, Allah the Bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the Creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد One of the main proofs for existence of Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, and since this is very important subject and there are a lot of queries about it in mind of the people, especially we live in an, in a, at a time where uh, atheism and doubt about existence of Almighty Allah is prevailing, uh, especially in the Western countries. Um, so we are discussing this proof, it's called the proof of contingency. Uh, this proof is the usual proof used by the Muslim scholars, we say ulama al kalam let us say the Muslim philosophers, uh, they usually have this proof to prove existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many proofs which has been discussed, but this is uh, the way they use it, the mutakallimeen, they use this proof usually, probably because it is simple and easy to understand for public, rather than going into detailed or philosophical discussions is very easy to understand this proof. This proof depends on a few points. We have to explain them one by one. As we said in logic, we, mean we have the first premise, second premise, and then the result. The first premise in this proof is that the world is changing. The second premise is everything uh, which is changing is contingent. And the third promise is then the word is contingent. Now, let us discuss these three points one by one to know uh, how to prove this point and then we come to the second part of this proof uh, in order to discuss it. The word is changing. The question which comes, is this word around us eternal? It was there since the beginning has no beginning, it was always existing in history, or no, it was created at a certain time which we call contingent, or muhdath in Arabic. Well, the word, as we see, the proof here that no, the word is contingent, is not eternal, in the sense created at certain time. If we accept the Big Bang Theory, for example, it says that before 14.6 billion years, this world was created. So it was created at that time, 14.6 billion years before. So it is contingent, and before that, it was not existing. Now, some might claim, some of the scholars, philosophers, atheists, they said no, the world is eternal, and it was always existing like this. You cannot imagine any time that the world was not existing. Billions and billions and billions of years, if you go backward, you will find that the world was always existing. That argument might come. Some of the atheists, they have that belief, you know. They put it. I say, okay, let us discuss, is it possible that the word be eternal? We say, no, the word cannot be eternal. Why? The first premise, they say the word is changing. Changing means what? 
eternal thing will remain as it is with its attributes continuously. That is one of the uh, signs of eternity. The contingent things are changing. The world is changing in the sense it's changed its shape. No, the earth is moving, the sun is moving, the galaxies are moving. There is a day at the daytime, there is a night, different hours, different places. The earth is not in its exact place as it was. You know, it is changing its place because it is moving around in a circle, let us say around the sun and the sun and solar system around the galaxy and the galaxy around other galaxies. So there is continuous change. The human being was a child, become adult and become uh, old man and then dies and the new generation is formed. So there is always a change. It is not the same. The colors are changing. You, you paint the wall and become a new color and you demolish the building, build a new building. So there is continuous change in that. Then. You are hungry, then you eat, you get satisfied and then you, you, got, you are willing to sleep, you go to sleep, then you are you awake. So there is a change in your position. What we mean change that anything which is different than the previous moment, previous time. Any, so if we want to say exactly in every second, even every portion of a second, there is change in the world. Actually, some of the philosophers said the human being at every second is not the same a second before, because within one second, still there are a lot of changes in your body, in your place, in your time at least. The time will pass as one second passed from the time. So there is a situation of change. So these are different changes that we can imagine. The minimum thing to say that there is change in time. It was past, become present, and gradually it will go to the future. The easiest change is change of a place. It was in this place and changed to another place and to third place and so on. Well, another form, change in shape. Maybe small, become big, then demolished, decayed, finished, and comes, etc. That is a change. If we see in physics, they said according to thermodynamic law of physics, they said the heat will move from uh, hot uh, matters into cold matters continuously. And at a time, all the heat will finish and everything will be called to the absolute zero because all the heat or all the energy available in the material things will finish because it is moving from hot to cold and not reverse, always in one direction, from hot to cold. The heat is moving and it will finish. Well, we know from science the age of the sun uh, is uh, limited. They say after so many million years, for example, uh, all the explosions happening now will finish and the sun will be cool will not be hot as it is now. So it has certain age. There is change always and that change from a state to a new state to a new state and so on. So continuous contingent situations. So the world, while well, is changing or you can say changeable or you can use another word variable or the world is inconsistent uh, that is a fact, we cannot deny it. We cannot say the world is one. No, it's not one, it's shape is changing. Now, if the world is changing, then every changing thing is contingent. Why every changing thing is contingent? Why it cannot be eternal? Because if it would have been eternal, all the changes would have happened in the eternity. Now, if I imagine the sun, let us say, after 100 billion years, for example, will finish, then if the sun was created in eternity and it was existing since eternity, then 100 billion years already passed because eternity means 
billions and billions and billions and billions and billions, infinity years past, you know, because it has no beginning. Eternal is the one has no beginning. So it goes in the history to billions and billions and billions of years. So every change would have happened in eternity. And it will remain without change. The contingency, because the shape will change, will change because of effect of time or place. And by time or by space, when it comes to the time and to place, it will be contingent, will not be eternal. So we said every um, changing thing is contingent. That is a sign of contingency that it is changing from shape to shape. So at any, at every, any moment, it is a new contingency happens. A child was small and then become adult and then become old and so on, you know. He grows, so in every second, every moment, every day, there is a new contingent situation. So the contingency is a sign for uh, 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 the change uh, or variation is a sign of contingency. It is not eternal because it happened at certain time. So now we prove that this word, because it is changing, then it is contingent. So now we come to the result. We said the word is contingent because the word is changing and everything which is changing is contingent. So the word is contingent. So if our world we prove is not eternal, is contingent. Now we come to the second part of the proof. We say that every contingent needs a cause for its beginning. And the world is contingent, so the world needs a cause for its existence. We say the world is contingent means created at certain time. So now Logically, every contingent thing needs a cause to bring it into existence, to create it, to be a reason for its existence. If the world was not existing, then how it came into existence, there must be a cause for creating it, for making it. I mean, if, let us say, Big Bang, they say there was a matter, even if we will not ask from where that first matter has come, but that matter exploded or expanded. So a new situation happened. That expansion needs a cause, naturally. It cannot happen without a cause. Well, even that matter of the, the world, the Big Bang Theory, even that first matter, naturally, it was not existing and came into existence. Why? Because it is contingent. It was let us say, uh, concentrated matter, and then expansion happened in it. So expansion is a sign of contingency, a new situation happened, not eternal. So that matter needs a cause for its existence. Because by definition, contingent is something which was created, which was brought into existence at a certain time. So before that, it was not existing. There was nothing. And then it, a cause was there, and that cause brought it into existence. So now we said the world is contingent. We proved it. Now every contingent needs a cause to bring it into existence, to be existing, to be present. Now. The word, in this case, needs for a cause for its existence. OK, that is simple. Every effect or every phenomena needs a cause. Now, the word is a phenomena. We say contingent phenomena. It needs a cause for its existence. Now we come to the third part of the argument. That cause in which we imagine, we are suggesting, which created this world, 
Is that cause also contingent or is eternal? To make it easy, my existence is because of my parents. Are my parents eternal or also they are contingent as well? I say, well, my parents are contingent. So they need a cause. Who is the cause of their existence? It's their parents, grandparents, my grandparents. And my grandparents also are contingent, so they need another cause, their grand-grandparents. And so on will continue till Prophet Adam and Eve, for example. Say, well, Prophet Adam and Eve are not eternal. They are, they are also contingent. They need a cause to create them. So that cause, if it is like them, it will lead to what? To what we call it? Al-Tasalsul or the infinite series, succession. One needs a cause and the cause needs another cause and another cause needs a third cause and fourth cause and fifth cause will continue. It cannot continue like this till eternity, not possible. We discussed about succession or infinite series that it is not possible, that is not true logically. Because if there is no first cause, there is no last cause. See, last or last uh, effect, I am last effect, for example, in creation. My parents are my cause. My parents are effect. My grandparents are the cause. My grandparents are effect. My grand-grandparents are the cause, and so on. Cause and effect, cause and effect, it will go to Prophet Adam. If Prophet Adam will have no cause to create Adam, then this means Adam were not existing. If there is no cause to create Adam, then Adam is not existing. If Adam is not existing, his son will not be existing. If his son is not existing, his grandson will not be existing. If his grandson will not be existing, it will continue till my grandparents and my parents will not be existing, till I am not existing. So you see, it cannot continue forever because succession is not true, is incorrect. So it has to end to a definite cause, and that cause should be self-existing cause, not contingent cause. Okay, so now that is one possibility. We say the world is contingent, we proved it. World is changing. Every changing thing is contingent, so the world is contingent. Now the world is contingent, then every contingent needs a cause, now, that cause, we say, is either eternal cause or also it is a contingent cause. If it is eternal cause, then that is what we say. We say the world has an eternal cause, and that eternal cause is Almighty God. He is cause of all causes. Allatul ilal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. And he does not need a cause because he is eternal. The cause of his existence is from himself because he was always existing. What the rest of the things, they are not eternal, they are contingent. So naturally the contingent things, they need a cause for their existence. So we say the, the world, the contingent world, need a cause for its existence. And we said if that cause is not eternal, as the argument of atheist or non-believer of God. He said, well, one contingent world is caused by another contingent world. Say, so, okay. And this is one of the theories of a creation. Uh, it is theory of like succession. Uh, one theory is Big Bang, that the world started from a point and then expansion or explosion happened. A second theory said, no, the world, like Big Bang, you know, it expanded, 
and after some time, it will be reduced back to its original shape. And then it will expand again and will reduce again and expand and reduce. And it was always like that in the history. So they want to say this world around us is eternal in the sense that it is changing, yes, but contingent from another contingent cause. I mean, that cause expanded enough then regression happened, and after regression read to concentrated form of matter, and that matter, the last one, is the Big Bang. In Big Bang 14.6 billion years ago, ago, a new expansion that where we live, a new expansion happened. So before that, there was another expansion and then regression. And before that also, let us say, every expansion and regression for sake of uh, making it easy will take 20 billion years, for example. Already 14.6 billion years passed, maybe to another five, six billion years, regression will happen. And then expansion again will happen, and then regression. They say it is like that throughout the history till it is going to eternity. We said that is not possible because we say the contingent things are created at a time. And succession is not possible rationally. If there is no beginning, there is no end. There must be a beginning, and that beginning is a cause for a phenomena, and that phenomena is a cause for another phenomena, and that is a cause, and then it will continue. If there is no beginning, then naturally the end will not be there. So. We come here, we say the world is contingent, and if it is contingent, cannot be created by another contingent cause, and that will continue forever, for eternity. Not possible. Maybe one from two, from three, from four, whatever, but then it will stop at a time which needs an eternal cause. So. Succession is not correct. The other way, they say, a circle, circle we mean the logical circle, which we have discussed. If A depend on B and B depend on A, so it will be like a circle. A created B and B created A, so they are creating each other. They go in circle. Or A created B, B created C, C created A. So it will be A created B created C, A created B, B created C, C created A. And uh, even that, we said, is not possible because if A is existing to create B, then B cannot be a cause to create A. A already was existing. Or if A is existing to create B and B created C, then C cannot be a cause for A. A was already existing. That is why I created B. So it can't be the future will create the past. The future will not create the past, will create the future. But the future will not go back to create the past. That is not possible. If my father and mother are a cause of my existence, I cannot be a cause of their existence because they are before me. So they are a cause for my existence. I will be a cause for existence, let us say, of my children, not my parents. So that is the circle is also not possible. I mean, if a circle, we said that this world where we are living was, let us say, we call it world A, was created by world B. And world B at the same time was created by our world, world A. So they are creating each other. It will go in circle. We said also circle is not correct and is not possible and is not true. Philosophically, rationally, is not true. So we come to the conclusion that this world, which is a contingent world, needs a creator, needs a cause, and that cause should be eternal cause. If that cause is eternal cause, 
Eternal cause means it was always existing. The question how it came into existence will not come. Because by definition we say that cause is eternal. If eternal, it was always existing. Actually, one of the Jews came and asked Imam Ali السلام, tell me when your Lord was created, when he came into existence. Imam Ali said, tell me when he was not existing, so I will tell you when he came into existence. When God was not existing, you can fix a time. If eternal, eternal means where he was always existing. So if he was always existing, you will not ask when he came into existence. Always was existing. So that is the meaning of eternal. So since billions and billions and billions and billions of years, whatever you imagine, infinity of the years, God was existing. And that is meaning of eternal. So God who is eternal, okay, he created this world, the contingent world. Contingent world came at a time. Now whether age of this time is 14.6 billion years like theory of Big Bang, or age of this time is more than that, make no difference. It may be not 14.6 billion, maybe 14.6 trillion years. Fine. Whatever it is, you can imagine years as much as you like. Actually, in certain traditions of al Bayt, they said before your Adam, there were a thousand Adam. And before this world, there was a thousand world. So Almighty God created many worlds. And we are at the last worlds created. If Big Bang theory is right, let us say, from 14.6 billion years before we created and we continue. So our last word, age, is 14.6 billion years. Before that, let us say, another 15 billion years before that, there was another word. And if you go 45 billion years, there was a third word. If each word will take, let us say, 15 billion years to be to be created till it's finished, you know. We, we don't know, maybe more, maybe less. So the uh, proof of contingency ultimately will lead that the world is contingent and every contingent is in need of a creator and the creator, if it's eternal, then this is what we say, that Almighty God is eternal. If this world is not, if this cause is not eternal, then again the same question will come, if the world is contingent, created by another contingent world. So who created the second contingent world? We say the third, the fourth, fine, but that cannot continue for unlimited cause. It will continue and will end with an eternal cause. Well, maybe before our world there is a thousand world, if that tradition is right. Okay, one world, one, there was another world before, and a third world before, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth, till 999,000. Okay, that thousand world before us still is contingent, and that needs also a creator and that the creator or that cause should be eternal. So you see, whatever imagination, you can extend your imagination in time that one was created because of the other, fine, you can continue, but it cannot continue for no end till infinity, it has to stop at a time. Suppose the theory which says that Big Bang was created from another world that is expansion and regression. Suppose this theory is right. We say, okay, our world expanded from a concentrated matter, and that matter was expanded before and then concentrated. I mean, our world was created from one world before it. Fine. 
And the second world was created from another world before that. And the third one from another world before that. As they say, the process of expansion and regression, expansion and regression. So it will continue, okay, till we reach a thousand time, I and mean, a thousand time each one, if it, its age is, let us say, 20 billion years, so it is 20,000 billion years before, okay, but still we are at a fixed time. Still we are contingent, even if the age of these words, different words, thousand words, is 20,000 billion years, for example, still they are all contingent. Ultimately, we have to think what is the cause for all that. If it is contingent, the same question will come from where it came. And ultimately, we have to say that all the, the word or the words, if we imagine more, has to end to a cause, and that cause should not be contingent. That cause should be eternal cause. And that is what we say, that the cause of all causes, Almighty God, is eternal, is not contingent, it was not created at a time. Actually, his existence is from himself, not from outside. That is why he was not preceded by non-existence. Always he was existing. We are contingent, we were preceded by non-existence. We are not existing, then we came into existence. But the eternal was always existing and he's eternal. So that is the proof about existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, some of the um, Western philosophers, also they depend on this argument, probably they have learned it from the Muslim philosophers, because that was said by Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina, we lived about, well, something around uh, uh, about seven, eight hundred years ago, but some uh, Western scholars who are recent nowadays, or some of them within two, three hundred years before, uh, or four hundred years before, they probably have taken the same proof from the Muslim scholars. So they put the argument, what they call it the cosmological argument, uh, and they put the uh, logical discussion is like every infinite and contingent being has a cause. Uh, every finite, sorry, every finite and contingent being has a cause. Nothing finite and contingent can cause itself. So every finite and contingent naturally because it is contingent needs a cause. Nothing finite and contingent can cause itself because he is created at a time so he cannot create himself. So we come to the third premise. A causal chain or what we call succession or infinite series, a causal chain cannot be of infinite length. A causal chain can continue. Maybe one, two, three, ten. If I say the human being, causal chain from me to Prophet Adam, let us say 500 generations or a thousand generations, but it will stop at a time. So the causal chain has to finish at a place. So a causal chain cannot be of infinite length. Its length should be finished at a time. So therefore, a, a first cause or something that, that is not an effect must exist. Not an effect means he's cause of all causes. He was not an effect of another cause. This is called, is not an effect. So you see, illa and ma'lul. So he's illa without is without before being an effect due to something. Well, William Lane Craig, also he put this in the following argument. He said, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Whatever thing begin to exist, start to exist, means it's contingent, has a cause. The universe began to exist well, according to Big Bang Theory, for example, the, the universe 
started to exist 14.6 billion years, or some said 18.4 uh, billion years, and so on. Well, different figures are given, whatever it is. But after all, they say you, the universe around us began to exist at a certain time, fine. So therefore, the universe has a, had a cause. Because it began to exist, it must have a cause. And then an actually infinite number of things cannot exist. He said succession or infinite series or tasalsal cannot exist. A beginning, beginningless series of events in time entails an actually infinite number of things. So the thing which has no beginning, ultimately it would lead to infinite number of things. Therefore, a beginningless series of events in time cannot exist. So whatever has no beginning cannot have another one, no beginning, no beginning, no beginning, and it will not continue to infinite series. So ultimately it has to, it cannot exist. So it has to reach to a cause without causes. And then they put it also in another way, the series of events in time is a collection formed by adding one number after another. So when we say that series are contingent, because series means one time, now one time you can imagine it a second, you can imagine it a day or a year, or a billion year, fine. One billion year, before it another billion year, before it another billion year, so you add time, a series of time. So that series of time are, after all, contingent and must have a beginning. So the series of events in time is a collection formed by adding one number after the other. Second, a collection formed by adding one number after another cannot be actually infinite. When you say our word, that is one number created by a word before it, that number two. And number two was created by a word before it, number three. And by number four, by number five, it cannot continue into infinite situation. So it has to have a beginning. So therefore, the series of events in time cannot be actually infinite. So all that discussion is actually depending on the argument that we say infinite series are not correct, are not true, not possible. At the cell cell is not possible. And if not infinite series, the other way, circle, so it's circle is also not possible. Both are not correct, untrue. So ultimately we have to say that the contingent series will stop at a time which was created by an eternal cause. So maybe this word created by another one, by another one, till a thousand word, but then Number 1,000 was created by an eternal cause, not contingent like it. Because a series of contingent things cannot continue. They should have a beginning. And that beginning should not be contingent. Otherwise, from where it came into being. Every phenomena needs a cause. So this is a phenomena, new thing, contingent thing. Who is the cause of that? So it needs a cause. So that cause is an eternal cause or should be cause of all causes. And that cause should not be contingent like these causes, like the same series of causes. So that is, we say that is what we describe as Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes they put the argument in that way, say, that chain of series, either created by a cause from within it, which is not possible because it is contingent itself, 
are created by a cause from outside. So if created by a cause from outside, that cause outside, if it is self-existent, so that is God. That is what you say. If it's not self-existent and also created by a chain of series, fine, that chain should end to a cause from within it, not possible. From outside, we come that who is that outsider? The outsider is, if we say eternal, and this is what he say, will end to Almighty God. If not eternal, then again, we'll go to a series, and we say series should end to cause and so on. Uh, what I mean, there are a chain of cause and effect in our existing universe. Like, as I said, you know, uh, I was my the, I am phenomena, the cause of my existence, let us say, my parents and my parents and my grandparents. So this is a chain. The beginning of that chain from within it is not possible because all of us were created. Even Adam was created. So from this chain, the cause is not possible. So it must be from outside. Then outside, who created Adam? If we say Almighty God, who is eternal, okay. If we say, no, Adam was created not by God, by X cause, for example. We say, fine, that X cause created Adam, which is not eternal. Adam was created, let us say, by another Adam, Adam number two. Fine, Adam number two, if he's eternal, then he is God. If he's not eternal, then again, he was created by a chain of series from father, grandfather, grandfather. Well, it may go, let us say, to a thousand generation and ultimately will end to second Adam. So that second Adam, again, is contingent. So it needs a cause from within itself, not possible from outside, and so on. So whatever imagination are there, you say different thing, different matter, matter from energy, energy from matter, this from that. Because it is changing, then it is contingent. And because it is contingent, it needs a cause. And that cause has to be an eternal cause. If that cause is eternal cause, this is what we are proving. That Almighty God is an eternal cause. So they may go around through different ways. And they put many rules and regulations of physics and or quantum physics or other things. And they say, we have seen things coming there unexpected. Fine, unexpected, there must be a cause for it. Unexpected, you don't know what is the cause of a new electron or a new photon which has come now in the field that you are looking. Unexpected, from what you know of causes, you find a new electron has come or a new photon has come. Fine, you don't know the cause. It does not mean it is without a cause. It has not come from nothing. It comes from something, but you do not know till now. You do not expect till now. Fine, by time, then you will find some other causes are there for it. So that is how the, we can prove existence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the proof of contingency. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi tahirin. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد عجل فرجهم